go. Well, it's the end of summer garden wrap up. It's very, very hot. And a lot of plants are showing signs of distress. And it's time to start canning. The herb bed has done really, really well. Last year's strawberries are actually still pumping out flowers and strawberries. Even a couple of bachelor buttons. And uh, parsley. This parsley will stick around till next year. The oregano took over and the valerian is kind of hanging around. I don't see any seeds. Doesn't mean there aren't any, but I don't see any. It still smells nice. The thyme is down here somewhere. <laughs> it needs to be removed and replaced. I'll keep it for Thanksgiving and the next year I'll replace it with a new with a new plant. Sage is still going strong though. All these lovely little leaves will be used for Thanksgiving dinner. It smells uh, amazing. And the rosemary is off to the races. Watch out for the hose here. Yeah. The uh, red sorrel is definitely done and gone. I'm, I'm just going to let that seed sprinkle over everything. You can really see the heat stress in the planters. It has been incredibly warm though. Yeah, no matter how hard I watered it, it just, it couldn't, it's suffering. And even the basil in the, the soil, which usually does really well in the heat, is, is suffering. In fact, even the lemon balm, which usually can survive a nuclear, you know, a nuclear explosion, mm -hmm. is suffering in the heat. Uh... Blueberry number one, done. Did fantastic. Needs to be chopped down pretty low. Blueberry number two, oh, the heat stress. This blueberry does not like heat. Blueberry number three, um, I don't even know if this is gonna survive. We'll see. Baby pomegranates. Still looking severely happy, but considering the environment that pomegranates come from, um, I'm not surprised. And most of the roses pulled out, well, most of the voluntary, volunteer roses, um, pulled out, doing just fine. Still producing lots of baby roses, lots of roots. Ready to go to new homes next year. lower box. Doing pretty nicely. Uh, basil's ready for its last cut and uh, use. This strawberry planter will, uh, will go bye-bye very soon. Um, it didn't throw any runners this year. Uh, top planter box. Um, absolute failure for chilies. But the parsley seems ha very happy. Parsley is really happy in the top box. <laughs> and look uh, over and there. some tomatoes. I mean, yeah, some tomatoes survived. Uh, one um, small cherry, one Roma, two Romas. And they produced, well, this one's, <laughs> this one fell over. Um, they produced, they didn't get very big though. Lots of little tomatoes, are there? Yeah, lots of little tomatoes. Um, I suspect, highly suspect that this top box will do much better next year with um, a fresh batch of the same soil that went into the lower box. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go around. Watch the hose. And 
and the summer cleaning means that the garbage cans get soaked because the garbage company only pays for cleaning once per every five years. I'm letting, I'm letting these green beans go dry for a purpose because um, I want this garden to be self-sufficient mm -hmm. and if I put enough of these around the fence, these will grow wild on their own um, when I leave. <laughs> and the only thing that will have to happen is to beat them back after, they're, after they die and they'll provide a nice cover for the, uh, for the really yucky fence. The raspberry produced, not very big, but I, I don't know much about raspberries, so I think it's okay. It needs a bigger planter. I think it gave us about a quarter pound of raspberries. Uh, last green bean. Oh, the artichokes are done. Sorry. Artichokes are done. They, uh, they were... The bees really loved them. Yeah, if you want to encourage bees, artichokes are definitely one they love. These are, these are also pretty much done, but only, I think only because I didn't water them enough. I, I didn't deadhead them at all. Um, but this bush should grow by leaps and bounds next year and produce even more flowers. The shrub did famously, I, I almost murdered this thing. It was out to here. I chopped all of this. I chopped like at least six inches off each side. Mm -hmm. And it just, it came back. This is a fantastic shrub. It's really happy. Uh, weeds and weeds. Those, these always seem to stay green until the very last, but they flowered early and, and then stopped. But they're pretty as greenery. In among here is, is, there is parsley in here, I promise. But I have not weeded it. There's, yeah, there's some, but it's way down there. This little strawberry, there is a strawberry here. This little strawberry sent out runners. So there are, there are baby strawberry plants starting there and I'll dig those baby strawberries up and replant them in the planter over there for next year. The grapevine is, is still alive. That'll weave itself into the, into the thing, into the fence next year. Uh, the corn is still alive and we have one little corn, one little corn stub there. That's as big as it ever got. This native rose still is not producing flowers. I don't know why. Maybe next year. And the tomatoes, which are really doing well in this compact situation. Of course, all the sunlight out in the front here as well. Yeah, that's true. That. That's true. Uh, the cucumbers are done. This is the very last cucumber. Very last cucumber. Uh, Hershey will appreciate it. And then that'll take get taken out. Lots. Just tons. Tons of chilies. Tons of chilies. That'll look good for beer? Yes. Very good for beer. A lot of them will get dried. Some of them will get roasted. More tomatoes. Uh, not a sing, well, look, one okra overgrown. Uh, I couldn't eat this thing if you paid me to, because it's too big. Uh, the horseradish plant in the back is still doing all right. It enjoys being ignored. 
the eggplant didn't produce, didn't get big enough, and the acorn squash is suffering mightily, but uh, we've got four little acorn squashes. They might turn green. They'll still be good. As side dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Tomato crop here, though, is... Yeah, the, the front strip for tomatoes this year, this is definitely how the tomatoes liked it. These particular tomatoes don't mind crowding at all. Because of the heat and the... Because of the heat we've had, there was no mold at all. The only bad thing was uh, the, the dehydration that the plant suffered. And the rows which is pretty spectacular. I haven't deadheaded it in a little while, but it's just going out to get one off. And next year I'll have to be careful that it doesn't uh, troop over the... And I don't see a single aphid anywhere. At all. I have not seen a single aphid since the last time I sprayed it with, com with, uh, with compost heat. just a tiny bit of disease, but other than that, it's been putting all its energy into growing leaves, roots, and flowers. And we decimated the mint, because it's it's just not good to let mint grow out of control. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the patch over there is the only thing left. The fern patch is suffering. Suffer, suffer. Uh, the honey, that one honeysuckle on the right hand side is the only thing that is not suffering in the whole garden. That thing is so happy. It's enormously happy. A volunteer squash plant, which probably won't produce anything. Yeah. Uh, even, yeah, even this little one down here. I mean, this has had regular waterings every three days, but the soil is still not fantastic. I'm not, I am not super pleased with the soil over here. This honeysuckle has to come out. It is, it's dying. It has not produced a brand new leaf in, in months. fern is really happy. It, this fern is still really happy with all the heat. As long as it gets watered every six days or so, it keeps on producing fiddleheads. And there's a brand new baby fiddlehead down there. This thing will turn into a monster. Okay. Oh, well, this did all right. This, this native... This is a native Astera daisy, and I can see little tiny mason bees. I don't, I don't know if you can get them or not. Little tiny mason bees are doing their jobs preparing for, uh, preparing for winter. There's lots of them. Yeah, yeah. Mason bees are extremely gentle. They're extremely gentle. You can actually handle them. Although I, I won't. I'll let them do what they're doing. There's a spider here too. <laughs> A lot of them going about their business. Yep. Native uh, native flora is a good way to encourage uh, native insect life. Yeah. Mason bees are extremely important to um, to Oregon to Oregon wildlife. Uh, they help build up they help build up colonies of beneficial bacteria from the for, from the flora that they visit. And then they'll land on other places, transferring that beneficial bacteria. And especially when they build their houses, because as mason bees, they build their own homes. Um, all that beneficial bacteria comes from their home back into the ground and helps build up our, build up our whole state. It's a very intricate web of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the beds that I'm, the beds that I've started to grow really aren't, really aren't built. There's a brand yeah. new bed I'm building by the windows, but it's not, it's not ready yet at all. Yeah. 
It'll just sit there through the winter and the hay underneath and the sticks underneath will break down. Okay. It's been a productive year. It has. And now it's time to go can some tomatoes. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, guys. And thanks for subscribing. <laughs>